This is part six of the video series, Why I'm Considering Giving Up Trying to Communicate with God. Those who hold to the notion that there is some ethereal thing out there called absolute truth will often subscribe to one concrete and unchanging perspective of the world, sort of like Plato's ideal world of the forms, and not allow their minds to even entertain notions of setting foot inside someone else's perspective so that they can see and experience truth from within that perspective. Of course, they'll read up and study other views on reality, but it will always be from their vantage point. They may never give themselves permission to look at another's truth perspective as their proponents see it. That is, in a positive light, considering how their members are encouraged or empowered by their particular flavor of reality. It doesn't so much matter the effect a particular belief has on a person's life, emotions, hopes, relationships. The most important thing is whether it is true or not. Abraham Lincoln once famously said, whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. So in this context, it is true that you can, yet at the same time, it is true that you can't. And it all depends on how you think about it. Perhaps truth is more fluid a concept than most folks would like to believe. During my times of reality-shifting paradigms, I have been granted the privilege of becoming intimately acquainted with the vast potential of instability that exists in the human mind. I have been made to see things that weren't there. I have become convinced of worldwide conspiracies that were the product of my own imagination. I have lost all sense of self and discovered my I new identity as the Lord of the universe. I have taken leaps off tall structures imagining I could fly. I have imagined myself to be the most evil being on earth, the Antichrist, and destined to hell for eternity. I have attempted to heal people with my words and faith. I have tossed and turned in bed for days at a time, confused and angry at God, on one hand believing myself to be a prophet of God, on the other hand believing myself to be a hopelessly confused individual with a mediocre life. And none of these hopelessly irrational actions that I do of my own accord, that is, according to my beliefs at the time, in every single one of these instances, the thoughts I had, the feelings I felt, I imagined to be from God himself, guiding me, leading me, instructing me what to do, in some cases damning me to hell. And it was all within a Christian context. Perhaps the only consistent paradigm I had for viewing the world through all of this was that God has indeed spoken directly to humans in the past, as seen in the Bible. Therefore, it made perfect sense to me that it is possible, even probable, for him to continue doing so in the present. I did not have that distinction many religious people hold in their minds. The idea that God intervened in a more direct, unmistakable way when the world was young. But now, since he has gotten his most important ideas across, he deals with people in a less direct and more subtle way than he used to. I did not see any logical reason to hold on to that distinction. It seemed perfectly clear to me that if, as God spoke directly to Elijah and Moses and other prophets in the past, there was no reason why he would not or could not speak directly to me if I pursued him with all of my heart. And in spite of my irrational behaviors, that is exactly what I did. In my mind and in my heart, I was following God with everything I had. Impulsive decisions I made based upon the idea that God was directly communicating to my heart and mind what he wanted me to do. I had utterly no way to distinguish what thoughts were from myself and what thoughts were from God once I fully adopted that perspective. Some people will say, well, that's easy. If the thoughts correspond with goodness and they are in line with scripture, then you can trust them. If the thoughts correspond with evil and reject scripture, then you can know they are not from God, but from your own self or Satan. But it's not that easy. When you literally believe God is communicating to you directly, that communication becomes of utmost importance. You can easily lose your sense of boundaries, your sense of social norms and behaviors when you believe the creator of the universe has instructed you to do something. For example, I believed God wanted me to spread love around the community where I lived. So what did I do? I reached out to complete strangers, attempting to befriend everybody I saw. 
I walked up to people I'd never seen before and offered to buy them breakfast. I purchased $250 coats for teens I had just met. I attempted to teach piano lessons to a boy I had met on the street. I talked about God and the wonderful things he had in store for our community to everyone I came across. This made certain people very uncomfortable. But since I believed I was following God's will, I was unable to recognize that I was doing anything inappropriate. Was I violating anything specific in, in scripture? No. I was not able to discern that I was doing anything wrong by being kind and generous to people. Was I being obedient to what I felt God was calling me to do? Absolutely. Did that screw up my life? You better believe it did. Of course, many of you may point the finger at my chemical imbalance, saying, it wasn't really my fault, nor God's fault that these behaviors occurred. It was merely the product of a brain gone haywire. And I might say to you, my point exactly. All brains have the potential for instability, and that inherent instability makes it impossible for us to know whether a thought or idea that exists in our minds really came from God or just ourselves. A person who has a stable brain, in the psychological sense, might feel he is better able to discern the thoughts and intents of God than someone with an unstable brain. But that is only because God's thoughts he imagines himself to perceive occur to him in a more reasonable fashion due to the more normal functioning of his brain. He is really only discerning his own more stable and less chaotic thoughts, thinking that because these ideas seem reasonable and agreeable to scripture, they must be from God. But since unstable people tend to have wild and less ordered thoughts about God, their thoughts do not reflect God's ordered nature, hence they must be deceived. In both cases, people are looking at their own thoughts, thinking that somehow they originate from God, or that God is trying to communicate with them through their thoughts. Stable or unstable, the process is the same. If I had come to understand that these ideas I had were my own and not God's, would it, would it have affected my behavior? In every way. I would, I would have been more self-evaluative, less inclined to trust every feeling or impulse I had on the inside, believing that those feelings and impulses were God speaking to me. There is really only one safeguard against me falling into that kind of error again. And that is to recognize that God doesn't communicate with us through feelings, thoughts, or impulses, at least not in a direct way. If I get the impulse that says, that person is not a Christian, I need to go to them and share the truth with them. It is my own compulsion coming from within my own mind. It is my own specific interpretation of God's general intent, which is to love God and love others. But it is not any sort of directive straight from God to me. It is highly subject to interpretation, therefore error. If I focused more on specific things I wanted to do, rather than focusing so much on specific things I thought God wanted me to do, chances are I would be much more content taking full ownership for my thoughts and feelings, and my mind would cease being such a battleground for irrational impulses, like feeling driven by God to heal the sick, feed the hungry, preach the return of Christ to the world, and all the other delusions that come with believing you are one of the two witnesses of Revelation. I do not currently have this belief, but I can tell you the honest truth. As a result of my biological and mental makeup, I have a high proclivity towards irrational thought when irrational belief systems are introduced. And I'm going to stop there and continue in the next video.